You have obviously talked about the three-point margin a lot to us, um, but you have a team that gives up more three-pointers attempts than all but four teams. What are the trade-offs to that? How did you land on that being your defensive system? And what does it take to kind of thrive defensively while giving up so many three-pointers? Uh, I think the key to that is, is who you give them up to uh, and the, the timing of when you give them up, you know. Um, and then I think the other the third piece is, um, are they heavily contested, slightly contested, or not contested at all? And so I think everything just comes back to the most important thing is transition defense and protecting the paint. And then the third thing is, can you manipulate who's shooting what shots and when they're shooting them? And I think that's, you know, we're continuing to get better at those things. How, what are the keys to that? What do you need to work on? What, what has allowed you to get the right guys in those shots? Uh, matchups are important there. Uh, just understanding their spacing, um, the, the go-to actions that they go to. And then the timing of your help, where you help and when you help is super important. Um, but it really stems from our guys. Our guys do a good job of kind of paying attention to personnel and understanding who's who and who's where. And I think that's, you know, it's credit to them. Joe, I wanted to see what you thought of Pascal Siakam landing with Indiana. And this time of year, especially for teams that are kind don't of... Save yourself the rest of the question. I don't, I don't really care. But, but does, your, <laughs> does your awareness of, you know, kind of what's going on around the league, you know, increase this time of year into year uh, two? No. Uh, I mean, obviously I saw it, you know, there's, there's a TV out on the back. You know, guys talk about it, but uh, it doesn't really concern me. And in the last game, you guys went to that zone in the third quarter. It's been pretty effective for you guys. That was obviously a big priority for you this year, having something like that. How did especially that 2-1-2 look come together and just start to be so effective for you guys? I uh, just tried to match um, a, a small thing that kind of fits our roster, fits our uh, team, fits the um, you know, defensive versatility that we have. And so the ability for our, our bigs to uh, guard the corners, understand and know who they're guarding, um, you know, the ability for the middleman to communicate, and the ability for the top two guys to have ball pressure. So I think it just kind of fits our team's personality, fits our team's roster. And uh, it's something we just have to continue to grow at. Um, you know, I, I, I thought the guys did a great job in it, communicating to each other. You kind of felt how it changed uh, just the flow of Toronto's offense. Um, I, I can't remember what Indiana game, but it was good in the Indian, one of the Indiana games that we played. I can't remember which one. Uh, so I think just kind of continuing to stay open-minded to finding different ways to, to guard defensively. And that's kind of something we talk about as a team is you have to have a set of rules. But offensive guys are so good. Uh, offenses are so good. Rules kind of go out the window. And, um, you know, your ability to communicate and think on the fly is kind of where we see our defense going. And our guys are really, you know, working at that. Joe, to, to Jay's question, that philosophy of who you give up the three-pointers to, very much what Milwaukee did last year, did Charles Lee bring kind of bring that philosophy in, uh, or did he enhance that philosophy? What was his role in kind of all of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, he um, is a part of the defensive team, and, you know, he brought uh, just that level of perspective, obviously, with the drop defense that they have, and uh, his ability to kind of teach it and coach it. So, yeah, he definitely had a part into, um, you know, as we talked about before, they were they were a team that gave up a ton but, you know, protected the paint first. And so, um, you know, it's good having him and good having a bunch of guys from different places that bring those those dynamics. Joe, um, your thoughts on the hiring of Gerard Mayo? Any, f and any advice for a 30-something-year-old coach of color in this market and how you – and, and the pressure that comes with that? Mm -hmm. um, I, I loved her. I had a, uh, the times I went over to go visit, I got to spend um, in the linebacker room and the defensive room with him and Steve. And uh, just his ability to think the game, I liked the relationship that he built kind of with his linebackers and those DBs. And uh, those film sessions were intentional, but they were also like they were built on relationships. You could really see that. So as far as advice, um, I mean, you know, not really. I mean, he's been around a long time. He's coached there. He's played. I don't need to give him any of that. Uh, but he does have uh, my support and can't wait to go over there and, and sit with him and, and just kind of learn from him. Are you a football guy? Do you understand? Did you understand all that stuff? What, was, what stuff? The football stuff that yeah. was going on. Mm -hmm. and like, like, yeah. So you're a big football guy? Uh, I mean, I'm a big football guy as in like football, but I also like American football. Um, <laughs> so, yes. That. that. Yeah. Uh, I do like I do like both, but you know it's funny. You take a look at um, 
I have, I do, I'm a football uh, guy. You take a look at their defensive schemes and their ability to pass guys off is something that I pay attention to a lot. I think teams are getting really creative in their uh, pre-snap motion, which is kind of the same way as manipulating matchups. And, um, you know, like what Miami does with their pre-snap motion and kind of gain just a little bit of momentum before the ball is snapped and get there. Like finding those small ways, we use some of the uh, wide receiver routes for our plays. Um, so just any sport that you can kind of delve in from, uh, I think you can learn something. So I definitely pay attention to it. So you watch football games and pick up things. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mostly the wide receivers, pre-snap motion, and uh, you know the the like the Micah Parsons, the, the linebacker guys, like the guys that play both, and how they have the ability to guard different matchups, and how teams use um, you know their pre-snap disguises, and that's kind of like what a zone defense is, right? Take a look at like soccer, well, football, and American football. Take a look at those two; they're both essentially matchup zones, and your ability to pass guys off, know who you're guarding, guard an area. So it's all the same. I just wanted to check in on injuries. Chris stops and Derek out. Any cause for concern with either? And um, do you expect either to miss any more time than this? Uh, no concern. I don't expect him to miss any more time. Thanks. Yep. Uh, Coach, just because you sometimes ask us to ask you about off the court stuff, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I wonder if you have any thoughts okay. on the passing of uh, Coach, I want to say this correctly, Milojevic. Hmm. Um, well, first, I mean, just praying for him, his family, and the Warriors. And I think we were sitting there with a lot of our staff members when we got the news, um, watching film today. And it just puts things in perspective that it could all be gone any second. And so, um, you know, as much as important this job is and as serious as it is and as a, it's a, how people think it's life and death all the time, it's really not. It's just a, um, a really fun opportunity and something that we get to do. But when something like that happens, uh, it's scary. And... Um, I think it puts things in a ton of perspective and you know you have to value the time and the relationships and the opportunity that we get because you just don't know how long you'll be afforded to do it so uh, i was definitely like just really hurt by that you know as a as a coach just even thinking something like that could happen to one of your coaches players friends families it's tough